Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about what the perfect takeaway is, how you can get there, and one drill you can do to really fix all of your faults. Let's get started. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by our friends at Pinned Golf. In my hand here, I have their new Ace Range Finder. It's the third model that they've come out with, and it's the absolute best one yet. It's a features packed golf range finder that offers everything from slope, a slope switch that makes it 100% tournament legal, a USB charger so you don't have to buy any of the weird batteries, a crystal clear HD LCD screen, tour level accuracy, and much more. Guys, you hear me talk all the time about feedback. You need video feedback when you're practicing. You need yardage feedback when you're playing. And the Pin Golf Ace Rangefinder to me is absolutely the best quality and price of a rangefinder that's on the market. I used to pay twice the amount for a rangefinder that worked no better than this one did. And it's something that I think is non negotiable in all my students' hands. The Pin Rangefinder. Use promo code Cogorno, C O G O R N O, and save $25 off. We'll put the link down below. All right, guys, so one takeaway, uh, or the perfect takeaway rather, and really the most common faults, how to fix them, and one drill that I use all the time that can really fix so many different things. So let's briefly just go over, hey, what is a perfect takeaway position? If we're looking at the club here and the positioning of the club, there's a few checkpoints that I would use during my takeaway. Now, we'll define the takeaway period from setup until the point where the club gets parallel to the ground. From the face-on angle, when the club's parallel to the ground, we would call that the completion of the takeaway. And this is where we would check to see where the club is in motion uh, to see if the takeaway is correct. So a couple things from here. From the down the line angle, the first thing that I would look for would be the positioning of the shaft. And I like to see it basically right down the toe line. So right down my toes here. You know, it depends on the camera angle if you don't have the camera set up perfect, but let's assume down my toe line. Slightly outside of that is where a lot of players will live and slightly inside of it's okay. I would avoid you know, excessively too far inside or outside, about down the toe line would be a good measure. If you just took an alignment rod here, and I took my setup position, and I put this club down my toes, and let's say 12 o'clock's the ball, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock's my toe line, I would get the club roughly over that. Over that line, slightly outside of it, would be fine. In terms of the club face angle, we like to see the angle, the club slightly tilted down. That means the toe, be slightly in front of the heel, slightly tilted down. Toe behind the heel is generally bad news, right here. From the face on angle, by the time the club gets parallel to the ground, how far away from you uh, should it be? I like to see the butt of the club just outside the thigh. There's different versions, depends on how much wrist action. If I did all arms and hands, no body, you see the butt of the club would be even with the ball. If I did all body, no arms and hands, that would be the widest. I like some more width, you know, as the clubs get longer for sure. But let's say as a stock iron, I've got an eight iron here. I like to see by the time it gets parallel to the ground, butt of the club outside the thigh is a good measure. And last point I'd measure would be the height, which is, you know, when we talk with TJ Heaton in that video, you draw a line in the butt of the club, the club should be higher than it started. So it shouldn't go down, right? It shouldn't even stay the same height. It should actually go slightly higher. It's from the trail leg extending and the shoulders tilting, but I would look at those four. If I'm looking at a takeaway, hey, what's a perfect takeaway? How do I know? How do I measure it? Club position right down the line, number one. Toe slightly in front of the heel, number two. Butt of the club slightly outside the thigh, number three. And the butt of the club slightly higher compared to the line it started with, number four. Now, let's talk about some common faults and fixes. Okay, so the biggest issue, obviously, we see during the backswing would be some form of excessive rotation, which if we just look at the shaft, puts the club under the plane it started on. If I look at the club and I drew a line up the shaft at setup, let's call it this angle, roughly speaking, you want to have that club ride right up that angle. Again, a little outside, a little inside, maybe not right at home about it, but basically up, up that same angle. The overwhelming fault we see, 80% or more, would be that it gets underneath that plane angle or inside of it too early. Generally speaking, that would be associated with a club face that can tend to get to it, but let's not even worry about that. Let's just say the club gets under plane. So we want it to ride right on plane over my toe line. It gets under. Two main reasons why that happens. Number one, often overlooked, we have a, an arm, right? Hope most of us we have an arm. Let's say the left arm here. I've got the upper part of my arm, which is shoulder to elbow. 
that part's gonna be controlled by shoulder rotation. Okay, we often overlook this in the takeaway. We'll talk about that. And I've got elbow to wrist, which would be forearm rotation. So shoulder rotation, forearm rotation. Both of those elements can make the club go too far inside. We gotta fix for both of them because we're waiting for the drill. It's coming up soon. So shoulder rotation. If my left arm gets off of my body too much, like this, and also you can reference my elbow, if my shoulder rotates internally, which would be my elbow starts pointing more towards the target or even over here to the right of the target more, notice that obviously gets the club too far inside. It's also gonna be correlated with a very flat shoulder turn. It's internal shoulder rotation. External rotation, which I can do with both shoulders, would be my elbow pointing more towards my body. Notice when I point my elbow more towards my body, my arm stays closer to my chest and the club head stays outside my hands. That would be called external rotation. So a brief recap, you can internally rotate your shoulder, elbow away from you towards the target, bad news for most of us, under plane. I can externally rotate, which would be elbow more towards me, club more on plane, better news for most of us. That's the first part, we'll talk about that drill in a second. The second part is forearm rotation. That specifically happens from the elbow to my wrist. That would be my palm going more down towards the ground. That'd be pronation with my lead arm or supination, my trail arm, my, my right palm going up towards the sky, this sort of motion. As I do that motion, even if my shoulder was good, that's also gonna get the club under plane. If all I did was that again, neutral grip, I'd have a little open club face. So what we wanna do with this drill here is control those two variables. I wanna keep my left shoulder from internally rotating too much, number one. I wanna keep my forearms from having too much rotation. Number two, let's talk about how to drill uh, here in a minute, how do you do that? Okay, all in one takeaway drill. The first thing we wanna control is that shoulder motion. In simple terms, I would say, you're looking to keep the arm closer to your body during the first part of the takeaway. Now, how I would do that uh, would be a glove. I'd put a glove, a T, an object underneath my lead armpit. Now, when I set up, I put that underneath there. And essentially from here until we reach the end of the takeaway, which we said was club parallel to the ground, I wanna have that squeezed against me. Now I do see some players who keep the arm potentially too, too close and it gets too deep, but that's more of an anomaly and that's not really what this video is for. For you, that's a different video. I'm speaking to the player that gets too far out early this way generally. So keeping this underneath is gonna be a good idea for the greater majority of us. From here during the takeaway, and I don't mind from the takeaway from the top of it comes out a little bit, right? That's a different conversation, but keeping it in early, that'd be part number one. Now, as I'm doing this, the key feel here is to keep my left elbow pointing towards my body and stomach. Okay, so as I set up, my elbow points off to the side. When I do my takeaway, notice my elbow points basically back to the middle part of my body. That's part one that keeps the club outside. If all I change is the glove going off, the club goes inside too much, right? So glove under, left elbow towards my body. Let's start with just that, and make a couple swings early. So keeping my takeaway neutral to make the rest of my swing easier. Glove under, elbow towards my body. Now I had a little three quarter swing. I clipped the glove in the whole time. That's a little bit optional, right? But during the takeaway phase, uh, this would be a good idea. Let's do that one more time. Gloves in, I'm keeping the left elbow pointed towards my stomach until the club head gets about parallel to the ground. And again, I'm reviewing those checkpoints down my toe line, part one, toe in front of heel, part two, butt of the club outside my thigh, part three, and it's raised since it started, part four. Glove under, left elbow points towards my stomach. Yeah, that's nice, I just hit with that under all the time. So that's the first part. Now, I could keep my shoulder externally rotated like I mentioned, or avoid excessive internal rotation, and still have too much forearm rotation. That's where my left palm goes down, right palm goes up. I don't like to see a ton of forearm rotation during the takeaway phase. So from here to about this point, there's gonna be some forearm rotation, okay? But if you have excessive amounts, you need to feel, feel as though you've got essentially none, okay? Now when I start, my Back of my left hand points towards the target, my right palm points towards the target. If I literally had no arm rotation, form rotation, they would stay pointed there, okay? That would make the club look like this. Now, there's a handful of people who do that, but not many, right? In reality, the club works about this way. My right palm and back of my hand are pointed away. So of course, 
Of course, there's some forearm rotation. How much forearm rotation do you have? Specifically the amount that gets the club down your toe line with the toe in front of the heel. I'll say that again. How much should you have? Specifically to the point where the club gets down your toe line and the toe's in front of your heel. So what I'm looking to do from here is not have too much. Now from there to the top, right, you can add a little bit more in. But during the early phase, not a lot. So again, when you're rehearsing that, if you're used to going under, it's gonna have to, it's probably gonna have to feel, honestly, like the butt of the club's kind of right at your hip, the club head's way outside, the club face still points at the ball. But find your feels relative to the checkpoints that we mentioned before. So glove under, left elbow points by me. What I like to feel, I almost didn't tell you the drill, with the forearm rotation is keep the butt of the club pointed towards your stomach. So it's elbow towards your stomach, butt of club towards your stomach. Glove in, elbow towards your stomach, butt of club towards your stomach. And I'm looking to feel those, again, for the, the takeaway, right? Or like the first half, first half of the backswing. I wouldn't worry yet about what the glove does from there on through, but you're just trying to get this initial feel. Let's put that in one more time. So glove under the armpit, elbow towards me, butt of club towards me, right to here. So the, the butt of the club doesn't point way out towards the ball or right field, it points towards my body. That keeps the club head a little more outside. Elbow towards me, butt of club towards me. Yeah, good. So that's the takeaway. Those are the four checkpoints that make the perfect takeaway. I'd practice this with video or mirror. I'd use the glove under and the elbow towards me to get rid of shoulder rotation. I would use the butt of the club towards me to get rid of excessive forearm rotation. If those are kind of too simple for you and you need something a little harder, you can always take an alignment rod, put it on the side of the stick or in the actual butt of the club, start with it on your left hip, on the side of the shaft and keep it on there as it rides down your leg. That will also give you a nice feel. If you do it incorrectly, shoulder or forearm, that will come off your leg. Keep that on your leg, it can ride down your thigh. That'd be a, another way to do the same thing. The purpose of getting your takeaway correct is to make the rest of your swing easier. People often ask, hey, how do I go from here then to the top? Let's for another video. But from there, there will be some arm rotation from there to the top and in transition that shallows the shaft. There will be some arm rotation. But how you go from here to the top is let your right arm fold, let your right wrist bend back, keep your body turning and tilting. Let your right arm fold, let your right wrist bend back, keep your arm going. But this is about the takeaway. That's the perfect takeaway. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We're gonna put another card on the screen for a similar takeaway video. If you wanna work with myself and our coaches, help take your game to the next level, get a specific practice plan to really make improvements, check out cagornogolf.com. We'd love to see you there.